If you've watched the last show on Team Instructions, I spoke about the meta for Football Manager 22, which is basically narrow systems. But there's more to this than just narrow systems. Personally, I feel that sometimes you can use a couple of team instructions to really help you along the way. And on today's show, I'm going to share with you a tactic that does just that. Interestingly enough, we're going to use a couple of hacks along the way. And uh, we're going to put out a tactic that, to some extent, doesn't even make any sense. So I took this tactic, placed it in the Total Tactics Tester, which is a tool that is freely available to the entire community. It lets you review your own tactics in a nutshell. You want to find out more, just visit the link in the description. The video takes you to their Discord channel. And then you will join a whole bunch of like-minded people who want to experiment with tactics. Now, coming back to the tactic in hand. The results, well, I would say they're average. Now, they're not out there you know mind-bogglingly good if you're familiar with the total tactics tester you probably know this is half decent um beating average teams quite comfortably i mean 39 goal difference I was aiming for 40 of course there are certain things you can do to tweak the tactic to make it even more powerful um here we've got a balance league where napoli finished third i mean leicester finishing second 10 points behind, definitely there's a tweak here that we can do. Uh, against underdogs, it didn't lose a single game, scored 67 um, goals. So against weaker sides, it's definitely a lot of fun to play with. Even a, even when you're on an elite side, it surprisingly did okay. I mean, there were some matches where it completely shut out the opposition. This is going to be a very simple tactics video, right? So I'm going to explain why I've done certain things uh, with the roles and duties and how these should play out. Essentially, we've gone for a couple of hacks on this uh, in this tactic. So it's surprising, but you know, you want to have some fun. Let's go all the way. All right, right at the bottom, you'll notice I've got two inverted wing backs on automatic duty. Now, automatic duty, back in the day, I tell you not to use it because deep down inside, I was thinking it was a hack anyway. But here, if you go into it, what we've done is this thing about automatic duties is they follow the mentality of the team, right? Okay, that. First, let's get that straight. If you're on an attacking mentality, their mentality is always going to be attacking. They follow the team mentality. But the beautiful thing about these automatic duties is you can PI the living daylights out of them. So I've pi dribble less, shoot less often, take fewer risks. So this uh Park Taita and telling him to play shorter. Now, this thing about these uh, instructions, uh, well, you know that inverted wing back is going to go narrow, right? Because he's got sit narrower and he's got roam from position. So occasionally he might end up here. So this... This role might get into these zones. We've also added the get further forward instruction because I want the inverter wing back to pre to behave like an inverter wing back on a tank. But when he's on a tank, right, he can't ask him to dribble less. He's just gonna keep you know mowing down the field. Now, this doesn't mean that he's never gonna do it. It just means the likelihood of him doing it is a bit less. Doesn't mean he's never gonna stop. All right, so we've got this uh, dribble less instruction. We've got take fewer risk. Of course, here once again, why have I gone for take fewer risk? Because take fewer risk also affects the way they pass the ball. This is where I would recommend that you make your own little tweaks because the idea here behind these roles is to get me the inverter wing back going narrow. And then when he hits these positions, he could either go between the AM or go wide. Now, what? have we done here we've told him to run wide with the ball when he has the ball he will run wide with the ball now we've also told him to stay wider right so he's got stay wider as an instruction so when he doesn't have the ball he's a he's a bit um in the half spaces the idea here is this inverter wing is going to come between them then when he gets the ball he's going to run to the flank so we're creating a bit of a movement where this am when he has the ball he's just going to go off drawing fullbacks away, creating space for inverted wingbacks to come inside, which makes them a goal-scoring threat. On the left flank, we've done exactly the same thing. There's no difference here. Both the ro roles are with the same kind of uh, little uh, play instructions. Finally, we've got the ball-playing defenders. Now, I know that some people might want them to, you know, tackle harder or close down more. Now, I, that is personal choice. 
But here in my setup, what I've got them to do is dribble less. Now, you might be wondering, why have I got so many dribble less instructions all over the place? Here in the team instructions, we also got run and defense. But I'll come to this because the team instructions will work as a pair when it comes to exploiting uh, the narrow meter. Now, when we talk about a narrow meter, we're literally talking about narrow formations. Any formation that plays without wingers is considered a narrow formation in the game. And we call these the narrow meta. Essentially, a lot of narrow formations are fairly strong on Football Manager, but there are some quirky ones, and this is one of the quirky ones I like. Now, in order for us to use this inverter wingbacks to get them punching up the field, I wanted two roles here that basically are CMs on support. Now, why have I gone for a CM on support? Because I wanted him to hold his position, shoot less often, dribble less, and take few risks. I didn't want him to be a DLP. We could have gone with the roaming playmaker, but he tends to roam. We already got a roamer here, we got a roamer here. We don't need more roamers in the middle. What I literally wanted was a double pivot that held its position as the team uh, pushes up, as these two guys push up the, uh, the pitch. Now, these two are going to run wide, okay? So they'll draw players away. The threat is actually in the middle where we've got a pressing forward and a shadow striker. Now here, I've tried loads of combinations. The advanced world works very well. The pressing forward works well. The poacher works well. So here, ultimately, it's going to depend on you. Now, the reason why I've created this tactic is it's like a template for you to go out there and have fun with, um, to understand the logic behind the system. Okay, now we look, let's take a look at our team instructions. The team instructions are kind of aggressive, even by my standards. We've got trigger press much more often. So we want a very aggressive press uh, that happens up here. Now, you can also do this, right? And play with a mid block. It's possible to play with a mid block because when you play with a mid block, these guys are going to engage in the center of the park, right? So they're going to hold their position. You're actually drawing the opposition are going to try and come down the flanks. But the, the passage to the two DMs or their central midfielders might be an issue. So they're going to tr um, try to get down the flanks. But this is entirely up to you. I personally, uh, to make it easier for people, okay, you just go in there, hit this, have some fun, you're applying pressure. It's especially fun against underdog sides. Okay, then we come to the uh, instructions at the back. Now, we've got throw it long, distribute to fullbacks, distribute to centre-backs, and distribute to fullbacks. You want to be playing with ball-playing defenders. The reason why you want to be playing with ball-playing defenders is really simple. There's no DM. So what you want them to do is, against teams that play with a high press, you really need somebody to bring the ball out. These guys are going to be positioned quite high because they're not, they, got, they have to get further forward. If you play them as central defenders, then you've got to bring, ask them to bring the ball out as well. They have to be ball-playing defenders. Uh, they have to have good dribbling first touch. They have to try and bring the ball up. If you don't bring the ball up, what you're going to end up seeing is your passes, um, you, your players have run out of passing options. And when that happens, they hoof the ball. When they hoof the ball, you got to think of another way of playing it. So if you have got really poor defenders, turn this guy into a target man. Play a really strong meaty man in the center, then hoof the ball. Trust me, it's a beautiful thing to watch. As the ball goes from the back to the front, lands on his head, he lets this guy go. And then you've got these two players up on the pitch being very narrow. You constrict the space and it's a formation that can actually generate fair amounts of possession as well. Now, that's surprising when you look at the team instructions because when you look at the team instructions, you're probably wondering, why have I got these team instructions in play? I've got focus, play, focus, play, pass into space and run a defense. This is where I'm playing to the meta. Now, when you have certain instructions, they work quite well together. Now, we've got attacking with narrow. Why have I said it narrow? I don't... This depends largely on the kind of players that you have. If I play it wide, these inverted wingbacks will be a bit wider in the transition. But remember, they've also got scenario, right? So they're going to not exactly be hugging the line. All right. So they're going to be somewhere around here during the build-up phase. When they're doing, here during the build-up phase, uh, passing options. Now, if I were to play it wide, what will happen is, and this can be an option, this fullback will play the ball towards the flanks. He's going to look for somebody to pass the ball to. If this guy's got very good movement, he's been told to stay wider, then the passing movement is going to be him to him. He runs wide with the ball, plays this guy in. It can work. Definitely can work if you have the players who can play those kind of passes. If you don't have those play kind of players that can play those kind of passes, then I recommend doing this. Narrow. Now, when you play narrow, you get wall passes. This player is going to pass inside. He's going to pass outside. Then pass inside. 
they, they kind of do these little tandem passes easier for you to pull off. So this is a bit more easier to pull off. And then finally, the run and defense and pass into space. Remember earlier when I said we had dribble less? Dribble less is a fairly simple setup, right? When I tell players to dribble less, the idea behind it is um, we don't, we only want certain players dribbling more. And these are the players. We've got this guy who's been told to run wide with the ball. He's also running wide with the ball. We haven't told them to dribble more. We're going to leave it to their decision making. But these players, when they get the ball, they run at defenders. They run wide, pulling players away. He's also going to be dribbling as well, right? He's going to dribble more. He's going to pull play. He's going to attract players with the ball. The pressing forward or the advance forward, depending on what you want to set up. Even an F9 works with this setup. They're going to have space. This is the space that opens up. These are the players that are going to get into goal scoring positions. These are all the decoys that play pull players away. These are the players that arrive late into the area to score goals. And these are your two anchors. You want to play two solid DLP kind of players here. You want players with good positioning, anticipation, concentration. These kind of players are sitting in the center for you to be able to control the middle. Finally, what about opposition instructions? Now, I didn't test this with opposition instructions in play. Normally, when I play with opposition instructions, I close angles down. So basically what I'm doing, fullback, showing him onto the right foot. Basically, what this means is when he gets the when the opposition fullback gets the ball, he can't go down the flanks. He's forced inside. When he's forced inside, got all these players trying to win the ball back. This is where your individual preferences come into play. Are you the sort of person that likes to do this? This is something that you might want to consider. If you have the players for this, then this is what you do. You go into the tactic and you add tackle harder. Now, take a look at some of the transitions I expect to see. So here the opposition have the ball. The opposition have the ball, they're going down the flanks and one of our midfielders has gone in trying to shut down the play. This is something that you want to bear in mind. Those two CMs are very important. This is what it's going to look like when you have possession of the ball in your third, right? So when you're building up play. The inverter wing back has the ball. This inverter wing back isn't too wide, right? He's not sitting in these positions. Then we've got our two central midfielders on this side. Now, when you play with the focus play instruction, which is what we are doing, when we focus play down one side, you pull more central midfielders to that area to support the focus. When this happens, it opens up space. The space that's going to open up is going to be the space in the center. So here, space opens up in the center. We play one over the top. Yeah, okay, so it's nice. It's a very simple attacking pattern um, that you're going to see in this tactic. So here we're defending the ball. The ball comes. Our defender wins the ball. Now, here, whenever we play with a focus play, you're going to see players supporting the line of focus. But more importantly, inverter wing back AM, right? It's still to run wide with the ball and stay wider. Now, what sometimes happens is this guy will get the ball, they switch positions. So here we go. He plays the ball inside, plays it to this player, and he has switched position. He is attacking. He's going wider now with the ball. Inverter wing back is going to be free in this area. These are the transitions I'm looking for because you can create some very nice overloads and create um, like goal-scoring opportunities for players that are in the center of the park. It's our defensive transition. Our AM gets the ball. He plays it out to the other AM. The AM receives the ball and we go through the line straight away. So, if you can choose the right kind of players, pass into space and run a defense is going to be fantastic. I'm not suggesting you go out there and pass into space and run a defense in all your tactics. I'm saying that in certain tactics which are narrow, it can be fun. It can be enjoyable. I've created this tactic for your enjoyment, so that you can use it as a kind of a generic set. Go and make your own tactics from there. Maybe you're still struggling to work with a 41212 diamond, for example. Use the template. I've already created the tactic. The set pieces are there too. The idea here behind run a defense and pass into space is very simple. You want somebody to dribble at the defense, pulling a defender away so that somebody can attack the line. This is why you have to choose the roles very carefully. You have to look at your players and see what they can do. An advanced forward can work, a TM can work, a track or T-star can work. So there are combinations in the, with this tactic that all work. I hope you enjoy playing with this tactic. Once again, remember this is for fun. I want you to go out there and enjoy yourself playing this tactic because if you don't know what the narrow meta is, at least I create a tactic so you can see what's happening because we're going to have this 
flood. When it, when I create narrow tactics, I create center floods, meaning I'm creating this movement through the center, which is really hard for the AI to pick out, right? You're going to have multiple goal scorers. They can be your inverted wingbacks. They can be your shadow strikers. They can be your EMs. They can be any one of these players. The idea here is just go have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please send me a note below. If you have any other tactics you want me to cover, let me know too. Meanwhile, I want to thank everybody for your continued support this channel. You do not know how much that means to me. Please stay safe and healthy. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.